What's happening, everyone? Just a uh, update here. So this actually isn't a new engine. I've had this engine for probably three or four years now, and it was probably one of the first three engines I bought coming back into uh, model railroading after a break. It uh, it started off as a Santa Fe. It's a uh, Athern Genesis SD45-2. It was in the Santa Fe yellow and uh, blue, but the guy I bought it off of, basically somebody tried to do some stuff to it and it was pretty much a basket case. It had glue and stuff everywhere. So I took it and stripped it down and painted it into uh, CSX colors, not this one, but it's actually gray CSX, which I'll show a picture of right now. And the reason I chose that was <clears throat> I was just getting back into airbrushing and wasn't confident in my skills. So I chose the easiest color scheme possible, all gray, as you saw by the pictures. So never really liked it. It was also one of those things of, uh, you know, you could always do better type deal. So about a month ago, I got the uh, idea of why don't I strip it down and make it into a CXX. CSX YN3. So I did that. Turned out to be a lot more work than just stripping it and repainting it. Um, the model itself, uh, before with the gray color, it had a cannon cab, which I put another cannon cab on. And then most of the detailing was done before when it was in the uh, gray. So it has all the, uh, you can see the, the see-through steps, uh, the cannon cab, you can tell I <clears throat> put all the wipers and I also like leaving the doors open because I think that's a pretty cool detail. And then, uh, so before it didn't have ditch lights, so then I actually put ditch lights on it because the new, more modern one comes with ditch lights. Uh, and the other thing I had to change, I was pretty major, was the fuel tank. So the uh, the fuel tank was a uh, a regular rounded one. So this ended up being the, I think it's EL or something. Basically, it's I had to take a styrene and wrap it up the side there and to uh, form that new fuel tank. Because a normal fuel tank looks like, kind of like that. You can see how it's all rounded and it has air tanks there. So these don't have the air tanks. And uh, so that, that was a fair bit amount of work to get that to go and uh, work out. <clears throat> but it came out pretty good. Because you can't buy that Atherin fuel tank anywhere. I looked online. I looked at Atherin to try and get, you know, parts for an old one. You pretty much would have to buy one of these things and just scrap it just for that fuel tank, which I wasn't going to do because it's a fair amount of money for something that's so simple. So the last time I built this engine, and pretty much any other engine that you build that's a complete paint, you come down to this problem where all the different colors, say like these window frames, uh, have to be added after the fact. Same with the windows, because you gotta spray the clear. And you can't spray it with the windows in place. It's a pain in the ass to mask all the windows off. So when I end up doing, which worked out pretty good, was kind of the Athern Genesis. I put magnets in there. So I bought these magnets off of Amazon and then just made the, the mounts. So that way 
I can gain access to the roof pretty much any time I want. And uh, it makes it a lot easier to come back after the fact and say if you want to add a, a crew or whatever else. Um, the Maddox, they're super strong. And it just snaps back down. Uh, and then the other thing I added before, it, it just had kind of just general LED lights. So I added all the uh, 0603. LED lights, see if I can get them to come on here. All right, sorry about that. It was a uh, programming issue. I still had it in a consist, so it didn't want to respond to pretty much any of my uh, commands here. So here's the uh, 0603 lights. So each one of those lights has an individual uh, LED in there. And then same with the, uh, the rear. So I think it came out pretty good. I'm uh, happy with it. And uh, it didn't really cost all that much. It was mainly just buying the paint and adding a few more details. Like I changed out the horn, added the ditch lights, uh, had them make this train control box over here. So you could buy the Details West one, but I just made one out of styrene. And then just a fuel tank. And then anytime you're doing these type of multi-step paint jobs, it pretty much has to be disassembled. So I always paint them, decal them, everything without the handrails on, especially because these are the stock Atherns. And uh, works out a lot better. Also another tip too, if you are painting these Atherin handrails or any plastic handrails, there's a stuff you can buy. It's called a, it's a plasticizer or a plastic primer. They sell it at you know, all the major auto parts store like Craigans, it's meant for painting uh, plastic front bumpers. So you spray that a couple coats on and what it does is allows the paint to flex because otherwise this paint just chips off super easy anytime you try and repaint them because Atherin molds them to the color. Uh, they rarely paint the uh, actual color. So once I started doing that for these handrails, they've held up really well. Like this was another full paint that I did. It's actually a, it's a Proto 2000 GP60 and uh, it's a little dusty right now. It's been sitting in the corner, but yeah, all those handrails, this whole thing was blue. It was an EMD de uh, demonstrator that I completely repainted and redetailed for SP. But yeah, these handrails too were also uh, done with the plasticizer. Really helps out a lot. And uh, on this one, I'll go ahead and uh, add in the uh, build photos so you can see all the details and everything uh, through the steps. I took probably about 10 photos throughout the uh, build of this. One of the other things I got was actually bought another NCE throttle. So this is the old one. So my old one's kind of jacked up. It's taken a few spills. You can see how the lines don't work completely right because I broke the LED or LCD uh, display. So this is now my secondary throttle. So I bought another pocket and uh, it was just a phone or a network jack that I uh, wired in. Because uh, I was going to, well, I still am going to take my 
other one back or that one and send it back to get repaired. But I went and bought a new one. But this new one, I think it's got a different software on it. So it's been doing a lot of weird stuff. And I changed the cabs on it. So there's probably something I'm not doing right. But if anyone's got some uh, tips on that. So I'm running a SB3A and then these. And I don't remember what software. Find out what software this is. It's in version 1.3. I think that's what my other one is. Um, so the other good part of that is I get another one of these panels. So before I had to do all my programming and if you didn't unplug the main feeder to the rest of the track to the rest of the layout, when you go into programming mode, it'll program all the locomotives, that number that you're doing. Uh, instead of using the, was it the program on main and then I think it's service on JMRI. So yeah, you can really screw a lot of things up and I can't tell you how many times I've had to redo all my locomotives. So this left panel is strictly for programming on my programming track, which I have set up over here. It's nothing fancy, just some flex track for HO and HO and three. And then the leads that just go into that. And then I just put these stops because if you've ever done a lot of programming, they just kind of inch along as they're programming. And then the last little bit that I've done was I put uh, commercial carpeting throughout the garage in just the traffic areas. So these are the squares. So it goes all the way down there and then here in the layout and then all the way down. But I got some uh, leftover at work they were thrown away so I grabbed this stuff and put it in it's a kind of a pain in the ass to put in while you still have a layout in place because I actually put it underneath so I had to lift everything up and slide it and that carpet glue is some of the nastiest stuff ever created um, so yeah not much else going on <clears throat> up here everything's pretty much stayed the same I'm just uh, that last locomotive took a lot of my time and uh, not much else is going on. So I'm still uh, I'm probably going to do where that sitting over there, probably scenic that and just make it a, a yard and that will pretty much finish out that area over there. So just a quick update. Uh, thanks guys.